Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. Let's go deeper today. I'm enjoying our conversation this week on the Holy Spirit. It has been exciting getting to know him in this manner where we are not fighting and debating, but we can reason together. I hope you have been learning about the third person in the Trinity and no less a powerful person than God the Father or God the Son. So today, let us get right into our discussion as we seek to understand more about the Holy Spirit. Think about this. The Bible teaches that when one gets saved, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of him. He takes up residence inside that person. The reality of that is supported by the scripture that says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 1 John 4 and verse 4. Who is the scripture referring to as greater and as lesser? The Holy Spirit is greater than the enemy Satan, the same one Jesus describes as the thief who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, there is another thing about the Holy Spirit, however. I speak specifically about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, something that has led to much debate and controversy among Christians. Let me share with you some scriptures that are directly related to this phenomenon. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Luke 24 verses 45 to 49. Let me direct your attention to the piece which says, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. This is Jesus speaking to his disciples and telling them that they are going to be the carriers of the gospel of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And it is a message that will go viral. But, and this is significant, he told them to wait in Jerusalem until what the Father has promised arrives, when they will be clothed with power from on high. Sounds crazy, right? Well, let's continue. Later in Acts 1, we read something similar, but note the choice of words. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Acts 1 verses 4 to 6. So the one scripture illuminates the previous scripture. Jesus was therefore saying to the disciples that they should wait for the arrival of the gift, the gift that will clothe them with power from on high, the gift from the Father. What's this power Jesus is talking about? I don't want us to guess because it is in the guessing that we create problems. I believe Jesus answered our question in his very last words before he ascended into heaven. Earlier on, we read a bunch of things that Jesus promised the Holy Spirit would do, but he did not say anything about power. But now we see him dropping the power issue in the conversation. So here's what he said before he went to heaven. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Acts 1 verse 8. Are you with me so far? Jesus told his disciples that they were going to be his witnesses of the gospel. The repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations. This is the same message that he told them as we see recorded in Matthew 28, in Mark 16, that they should go and make disciples across the globe. In the Luke passage and in the Acts 1 verse 4 and 5 passage, Jesus is making an important point. You guys are already appointed for this huge assignment, no doubt about it. 
I have chosen you. But please do not start preaching the gospel. Please don't jump into this great enterprise. Wait for the arrival of the gift, the Holy Spirit, whom my Father will send. And when he arrives from heaven... He will clothe you with power. He will baptize you in power. He will empower you. He will do all of that so you can be my witnesses, so that you can do a phenomenal job in spreading the gospel. Why, Jesus? Why did they need the baptism of the Holy Spirit to empower them? And what's this thing about the power in any way? simple. There is an enemy of Jesus who is the enemy of all Christians. He's the enemy of the gospel. And he is, was planning to bring out all the big guns in his army to prevent the th preaching of the gospel. So you are going to need this supernatural power, not in your own strength. Simply put, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is God's way of empowering his people for the magnanimous enterprise of preaching the gospel in some difficult ways and in some testing circumstances. But with the power of the Holy Spirit, you will be successful because that's how the church is going to be built. That happened precisely as Jesus promised. And we see that recorded in Acts 2 and later in other places of the book of Acts. Okay, so they receive the Holy Spirit. But why do we need the same baptism of the Holy Spirit 2,000 years later? Because the assignment of preaching the gospel has been passed down to us. And just as those guys in the early church experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit and did such an awesome job of spreading the gospel without fear and in a powerful manner, we too need that baptism. It's like this. You learned from a man up the road how to repair cars and you do a pretty good job currently. But then the little man who taught you how to repair cars told you one day that you are good, but you can get so much better at this business, but you, and then you will become greater. And how can that happen, sir? He was going to send you to a certain training institute, the place where great mechanics go for higher training. When you return from that training, you are a top-notch, excellent mechanic. There is no repair that you can't do because you have been empowered with a whole new body of knowledge. That is what the baptism of the Holy Spirit does to the individual. It is nothing to be afraid of. In fact, who doesn't want more power? Real power, supernatural power, wonder-working power to become a world-class evangelist. Okay, a powerful evangelist in your local community. That's what it is about. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is essential for the effective spreading of the gospel of Jesus Christ. To be continued.